Hi, I'm Tim England, and this is Ask a Dementia Champion. This episode will be a brief introduction into the brain and how the brain is physically changed due to the disease that's causing the particular dementia. I mentioned earlier that the pathology or the disease that's creating the dementia condition is affecting one part of the body, that is this, the human brain, and this is a model of one. They weigh about 1.4 kilos when it's out of the skull, and it has the consistency of toothpaste. Now, what does the brain do? Well, the brain does everything for us. The brain has our memories. The brain allows us to walk and to talk. It allows us to reason, it allows us to plan. It controls our breathing. It controls our pulse. It controls our digestive system. It allows us to chew and to swallow. It regulates our temp body temperature. It does so much, I'm not gonna go into all of it. So think about this. If there is a disease that is causing the brain no longer to function correctly, it's going to present itself somewhere in the body. Think about that. The two are tied together. So there could be, and there quite often is with a dementia, physical symptoms and signs that may indicate dementia more than just memory loss. It can affect our gait, our ability to use our hands properly, our coordination, our ability to drive. It goes on and on and on. So there are a lot of physical manifestations of the dementia condition that a lot of people and most people don't even recognize. And it's important that we do recognize those and we will discuss that in more detail in a future video. So what is the underpinning pathology or disease that's causing the dementia condition actually doing to the brain? Let's have a look at that. So we're gonna have a very quick look at what is happening inside the brain when there is a disease causing the dementia to occur. Let's have a look at this picture. Uh, the top picture where it says healthy brain is a picture of a healthy brain, an autopsy taken from uh, a patient. And if you look at the picture below, that is a, a cross section of that same brain which has been stained to highlight certain areas. Uh, you'll look at an area which is the uh, cerebral cortex and hippocampus. They are significant areas of the brain. Uh, the cortex, which is stained brown in this picture, is the outer level of the brain, and that is where majority of the executive functions of the brain uh, occur. Uh, the area of the hippocampus, I'm highlighting that because in the um, formation of short-term memory, we believe the hippocampus has a significant role in that function of the brain. If you look at this next picture, this is a, uh, a slide or a picture of a brain that's been um, attacked by AD or Alzheimer's disease. Uh, you'll see the same, it's a, uh, the picture above. The picture below is again another cross section of this brain and stained again to see highlighted areas. The first thing I'd like to point out to everyone watching this is the difference between the, top, the two top pictures, the one on the left and the one on the right. The one on the left, which I've marked with red, is a healthy brain. The one on the right, which is marked with white, is an unhealthy brain. You should notice something different between the two, even to the untrained eye. The brain on the right, the AD brain, is smaller. It has shrunk. It's what we call, it's aprified there is less brain material. And that's really highlighted when you look at the, the pictures below. Look at the cross section. There is significant uh, tissue loss on the brain picture on the right than on the left. And fundamentally, what is happening is whatever is the disease that's causing the particular dementia, it's causing brain cells to die, slowly but surely over an extend, extended period of time. Brain cells don't regenerate. Once they die, they're gone. And as brain cells slowly but surely keep dying due to the disease, there's less and less brain matter. With less and less brain matter, then signs and symptoms of the disease or of the condition are going to start to show themselves. If there's less brain matter where the hippocampus is, there is less brain matter there to help with short-term memory creation. So 
it starts to affect memory. If there's brain shrinkage in other areas, it may affect language, it may affect uh, the formation of words, it may affect a person's ability to talk and to walk. It may start affecting their digestive system. Depending on the part of the brain that is being compromised by the disease and the loss of brain matter or brain tissue, it will start to manifest itself in different signs and symptoms throughout the body because the brain can no longer function properly because there's less material there to do it. Well, thanks for watching folks. Please subscribe, like and share. Please put your feedback and comments and questions in the feedback section below. Every question will be answered as soon as I possibly can. Cheers and bye for now.